Okay, as many of you probably already assume, I am very much a hands-on kind of person. Bit of a backstory. Beast 2.0 is my main workstation currently, and I built it about four years ago, three, four years ago, and it's been doing just splendidly until I threw a whole bunch of 4K video at it, and it just... It's, it's not having it. So, I bought the best CPU for that motherboard that money can buy. Special SSD hard drive, which is super quick. And I also arm myself with a little bit of uh, overclocking knowledge, which I haven't actually done before. And I think we're gonna call it good. Ah, blue! So we're gonna upgrade to Beast 2.2 and we're gonna bulletproof this thing. Let's do it. So it's not every day that you get to unbox a top CPU. So we're going to get a proper knife for that. Let me see. Of course, it's not there when I need it. This CPU is no ordinary CPU. It's literally the most expensive CPU that I've ever bought. Let me put it this way. So it's more than half of the original price that I paid for this entire computer. My CPU that I have right now. It cost like around like 300 bucks. This one was like thousand something. Like it's crazy. Definitely a high price for a CPU, but we want the best for this motherboard. And so you're probably gonna wonder why such an expensive CPU, dude? Like, why don't you just buy a better computer, this and that? And like, I was editing this video, right? I have this uh, new system I'm trying to incorporate with like multiple shots, all 4K in a multicam sequence and there is like four multicam strips that each has like nine cameras. It's a, it's a pretty intense uh, session, right? And my current setup would not have it. I mean, it's just like, it's not working out. First I bought some RAM, which didn't help. Okay, here we go. First I bought some RAM. Didn't help a whole lot, it was better. Tried doing proxies and stuff, that didn't help either. Let's see what this does. I really hope we're gonna do it before and after. So let me show you exactly how a session behaves right now. 2017 or 2016, we got this computer. It was pretty good back then. The motherboard was really good. CPU, like solid medium range, right? So this should hopefully be quite a quite an upgrade. So, okay, here we go. It's a playthrough for uh, Wired for Madness, which you've probably seen if you haven't. Like, I'll put a card up there so you can go see it. So here's the, here's the project. So you see, like it hasn't even pulled up the footage yet. It's pretty nasty. Okay, so it's doing its thing. Okay, hello. Also, I've included an option where when I switch to a certain camera, I want audio to switch as well. Also super tough on the computer. It's still, it's still loading up the session. Like, oh my God, it is not working out. Oh my God, yeah, this is so, okay. It's getting ready to play. It's like completely insane. Okay, but let's say like it's putting it into RAM. Let's see, let's see what the RAM is at. Where the RAM is. Okay, so it decided to wake up. CPU at 76%. It definitely went over, like, a, here, here we go. It's gonna go up to 100, and it's gonna slam up there. See, 99, 100, and it just, it can't, right? So it's lagging. I mean, you get the point. It takes forever to play. Like, I hit cut, for example, right there, okay? And it just won't play. We're still waiting. We're still, let's check it out. Just one single cut, that was it. Like, how long are we waiting? Like, 10 seconds? 15 seconds, where are we? Now it's starting playing. Also keep in mind that this is like, there's no color correction on this, like, at all. It's struggling, it's struggling. Okay, let's see, let's time the thing. So, I'm gonna make a cut, we're gonna time it. Oh man, if there is no improvement, I'm really gonna... I, I'm, I don't know what I'm gonna do if there is no improvement. Like, significant <laughs> improvement. So, three, two, one, go. And we're gonna hit space. Okay, so 15, I was I was right on. Let's do that again. Making the cut, three, two, one. So still waiting. About 17 seconds to make one single cut. So I guess that's when you buy a new CPU. You gotta upgrade at some point. This is like, this is over my, like I don't have that patience, I'm sorry. And we're not talking just cuts, like you just make any adjustment, like it would just take 15 seconds to do it, which is not acceptable. So. <laughs> let's uh, let's upgrade. Close, shut down. We're gonna get all the cables out. We're gonna open it up. 
get to CPU, we need to take these two fans off first. Yeah, it's pretty toasty. This is what it sort of looks like inside, right? So we're gonna get these two there and there. Get the cooler out and we can get to the CPU and swap it. See, it's been working for over three years at this point. Very little dust inside. I don't think I've ever cleaned it. It's constant airflow, like the entire time, so you really don't have to clean it. So let me get rid of this thermal paste here. Oh, it's nice. This is the Noctua one. It's still really creamy. You see me in there? Now, that's what the old CPU looks like. Let's get it out and swap it for uh, this bad boy. So basically the entire cooling system, it's uh, resting on these brackets, one on either side. It turns basically two mounting points into one right there. Let's get the other one out and uh, we'll be ready to rock and roll. And there's these two levers, one here, and one right here, so you kind of push down and in, and then release, right? So it opens up like that. Get this out of the way, and that's our processor. Let's get it out very carefully. Boom, there it is. Let's put him in his cradle to wait for his future use and get the new one the beastly one installed. Can't wait, this is gonna be awesome. Hell yeah. This bad boy is going right over there. Check out the difference in the cores so this is the new one and this is the old one check it out definitely way more cores than the new one <laughs> no question about that huh it's like jam-packed full of just cpu goodness so yeah <laughs> doesn't smell like anything how carefully Ooh, yeah baby Now, put this one on, cram that one over, lock it, it's the reverse of what you did when you took it out, and that should be it. So it's got these little arrows to let you know that it's in proper orientation. You should be careful how you put these in because you can actually bend some pins and stuff. I don't think we did any of that. So next, get some of that thermal paste in, this beautiful knock to a which I got with that cooler that I bought from them. That's about as much we need. It's a good healthy amount to start with. You don't need more than like a pea size blob. Hmm. Wait, are we out? It was only meant for one application, I guess. I think I have just enough. So we'll install the cooler, then we're gonna take it off and check if uh, we have sufficient thermal base. When installing these, should get the pressure on relatively evenly, so don't screw one side down all the way and then the other, but get them kind of going down parallel. So, the thermal paste can spread out evenly. You tighten one a little bit, then you tighten the other one a little bit. Now, we're gonna take it off. If we see a nice spread, it should be okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, and I'm afraid we don't have enough, right? So let's get the other thermal paste. It's not gonna be the best, but it'll do. You don't wanna mix these because apparently some are copper-based, some are aluminum-based. So sometimes they can react with one another and make themselves less heat conductive. So that's no bueno, especially when you have this expensive of a CPU. So just found this one. It's kind of old, but it's not too terrible. You just need about that much. I think we're just about ready to fire it up. Woo -hoo! Okay. Okay, so that's good. Now, let's see. Okay. That's just one of these that was in there. No beep just yet. 
Come on. Yes. Okay. So we got this going. Okay. So new CPU install. Please enter setup to configure your system. Okay. CPU. Uh huh. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Look at that. Ten cores, baby. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> We're not gonna mess with anything, you know, overclocking wise. We hadn't done anything to the previous one as well. It was just in the same settings. Just let's compare like how many seconds is it gonna take it to make a single cut in that ginormous sequence. I mean, that's just insane. So it's gonna restart. Okay, up oh, you get. Huh. I turned her on by accident. That's what he said. If we get to Windows, like, we're okay. Okay, I... We're in. We're in. <gasps> yes! We got to Windows. System information. Let's see. Intel. Oh, I'm liking the look of that. 6950X. Okay, so I would say that's mission accomplished as far as the CPU swap. But will it take 17 seconds? Um... Oh boy! Right, we gotta be connected to the internet. Also this one. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's seeing it like a brand new computer. Okay, because this this is the computer. Okay, so open project. Setting up devices, yeah. Okay. Oh, are you crazy? I mean, it would not even get to this point before a minute or two. Oh, I mean, no, no, no. This is so much better already. So let's make a cut and see how well it does. Okay. So cut, play, still. Oh! Mm. This is not good. This is not good. Now let's at least see if it's faster. Oh man. Three, two, one. So 15 seconds this time. Wow. That sucks. I'm still not giving up, I don't care. I'm uh, transferring all the footage to an SSD, and I'm also going to try an overclock, although it's already. And before we get to the overclock, I am just optimizing my Premiere settings. Apparently there's several things that I could do, such as clear media cache. I'm gonna put those cache files onto an SSD as well. I'm gonna try that before actually transferring the footage over to the SSDs because um, there's quite a bit of it, so I want to try the cache first. Um, and also, apparently there's a big thing about like updating your graphic card uh, drivers. So I'm gonna try that as well. So hopefully it helps. I'm really, I don't want to edit like this. No. Okay, got some movement finally. I spent about an hour and a half with Adobe on the phone and the representative was actually really helpful. Um, he accessed my computer remotely and after a bunch of experimentation what ended up helping was actually that he fully reset the preferences folder for Adobe Premiere and that actually got rid of all my plugin data, all the audio like in third-party stuff, right, which you're guessing, right, I have like a lot of. Once those were gone, the project work way, way better. Like all of a sudden, like it's a normal project. You make a cut, it's like working regularly. And it's all done. I can show you what it looks like um, once it's all done. Oh, the wonderful, the wonderful workflow. And it behaves it's nice and snappy, plays right away. All right. And this is with full-on audio processing, right? Color correction, everything. So it does take it like a second, but like, let's say, if I wanted to make a cut here, so I make a cut and I hit play, it plays right away. There's a lot of cuts there. But yeah, what a... And as far as the plugins go, there was this like one specific, it was this super old plugin like for like bass amp simulation and yeah, I got around with it. I just ended up using a different one. It's definitely a lot snappier since I put the new CPU in, but it's not, um, somehow it's not what ended up helping. So let's get to overclocking. I've read up about it online a little bit and it seems that we can get in the neighborhood of like 3.8 gigahertz with a nice cooler like this. I think we should be able to do that, so I'm downloading Cinebench. Let's see what score we can get. I also downloaded this hardware monitor to see, and as of right now, this was our highest 
temperature, which is kind of high-ish, but it's not terrible. Okay, let's run it. Let's see what it says. So this is actually not a bad score at all. 1681. We're going to try and overclock the CPU and see what our score is right afterwards. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. found this guy online who happens to have the same system, similar motherboard, very same processor, pretty much the same memory, so I just did a bunch of things. Looks like we're going to be getting um, 4 gigahertz, which is kind of insane. 10 cores at 4 gigahertz? Should be flying through projects like no one's business. Let's see. It's going to reset if we get a beep. Yes! Okay. It was good. Seems to be opening just fine. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> Maybe we'll trim it down like a little bit. Please wait. Okay, that's new. And it's like freaking out. Like, what is this? What is this monster you put in me? That's what she said as well. It's not gonna make it. <laughs> So I've set it to 3.9. Let's see. Looks like I'm gonna need some more coffee, dude. Okay, we're at 3.7 now, which is great. How about 3.9? Dude! I, uh... I think I just overclocked it to like 4.2 gigahertz. Check that out. Let's run a benchmark right now. Because I think this is pretty stable. I'm gonna run some stress tests as well to see where we're at. Oh, okay, okay. That is pretty good. I'm not gonna complain about that. We could probably drive it up a little more. Let's see how our... Uh... Okay, the temperature is around 56. It's running pretty stable. I'm gonna run another stress test right now, but I'm pretty happy. 4 gigahertz, 4.2. It's like jumping up and down as it needs to. Oh, I see. So one core. I see, I see. One core is running here at 4.1, if you want to call it. And then the rest are at 3.6. I kind of want to mess with that. Let's get the score even higher. Let's see if we can take all the cores to work at like 4 gigahertz and then have one of them run at like 4.3 maybe. I hope we don't break the thing. <laughs> it's a very expensive toy. Oh, okay. Looks like it's stable. The Intel's benchmark is definitely higher, so that's good. Although Cinebench is, is slightly lower, but I mean marginally. We're definitely like in the 1800s range there. Strange, the overclock seems stable. We're just gonna try and get the memory up there. We need to get it like around 3200. Okay, after a bunch of tweaking, I think I finally got it to run at around like 3200 right there. Not quite 3200 megahertz, but it's, it's in the neighborhood. Which is great. Because so far it's been running at like 2400 or whatever, which is dumb. The memory can do it, so I'm pretty happy with where we're at right now. Let's run another Cinebench, and I think we're gonna call it good. Ah, blue! Blue is my favorite color, but this is just dumb. Okay. Hmm. Mm, more tweaking! Ah. Okay. I think we're finally done with this. Got a slightly better score now in Cinebench, 1857. Compared to where we came from, I would say it's a drastic improvement. The memory is looking nice. It's not working at top speed, but I think we're gonna call it there for overclocking. I'll also let you know down in the comments perhaps how it's uh, how it's working out for the, for the editing and any actual workflow and everything. But for now, um, there's one more thing we need to do, and that's install this hard drive, which is insanely fast. For audio, this is absolutely overkill. Or maybe not, if you're pulling like a bunch of like 
samples from like libraries and stuff, you could definitely use some like better read speeds, although like a bunch of those are uh, stored in the RAM when you use them anyway, so it's a, you know, it's a toss. I mean, better is always better, don't get me wrong, but for video, like when you're streaming freaking 36 streams at the same time, this should give us some good read speeds in the neighborhood of like five or 600 megabytes a second, so that's great. So, let's put this one in. We're finally gonna bulletproof this computer. So this bracket I got on Amazon and it's made so that it can fit two SSDs just like this one, just so that I can uh, add one more in the future if need be. Okay, I think it's done. Let's see what the verdict is. Okay, it's booting up fine. It recognized it. So right there, we're gonna format it. First, we're gonna initialize and format. We're gonna call it, might be held down with a little bit of Velcro, but you know what, that's okay. It's not going anywhere. Wouldn't be the Alec Darson YouTube channel if there was just a little bit of DIY involved. I think it's a pretty good solution for right now. And actually, before I forget, just got this guy. It's a brand new thermal paste from uh, Noctua. It's basically the same like I wanted to put in the first place, but it's the updated version instead. So it's gonna give us a little bit better temps. So maybe we, keep, maybe we can push it even more. Did this ever work for anyone? Oh yeah, I'm not gonna run out of that anytime soon. Got some white wipes and stuff. Let's see. NACW1 cleaning wipe. Or probably just alcohol. Anyway. This is what you just about right now. Yep, smells like alcohol to me. So there you have it my friends, I present to you Beast 2.2 and it just turned off. Definitely much better. So I'm editing this video for about 3 hours now and look at, look at the temperature, 54. I am super stoked with the, how this CPU has been performing so far, I mean I definitely see a significant improvement in the performance. The workflow is much, much smoother. The hard drive I'm gonna have to update you on. I'm confident that this computer is gonna serve me well for the next five years, probably. 4K material, no problem. Like, with the effects, with whatever plugins I throw at it, it's just like, it's a, it's a real, it's a real champ, especially since we overclocked it. So, I guess the takeaway is that it's really important to have a, good tools and B, highly optimized tools. I mean, the Wired for Madness project could obviously have been done uh, with the old processor as well, but I'm still pretty confident that this made it a whole lot easier. But yeah, you can absolutely do all of this yourself. I think ultimately you get a little bit more uh, bang for the buck and it's like infinitely more fun. I mean, it's like, it's, come on, it's Legos for grown-ups. So I'm gonna hack away with this machine now. Um, there's definitely a lot more work to be done. It like never stops. Really looking forward to bringing you more and more content and also let me know if you got any questions about like what configuration it is or whatever, like it doesn't, it's not a tech channel, so I don't want to talk about it way too much in this video, but I'd, I'd be happy to answer whichever questions in the comments below. Super limited experience, I'm not like a computer guy. Like, I've built a couple of PCs in my life, but that's about it. Everything else kind of comes from the internet, really. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys had a bit of fun uh, watching me struggle <laughs> getting this thing to work properly. Next video is going to be a nice little update for uh, the Vicoustic Studio Overhaul series, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao!